Hello, dear ones. It's, it's Alice. I have three unrelated facts for you just now. Let's see if I can remember them all okay. Oh, the first one has to do with uh, devils and demons and stuff like that. And, uh, and what I have to say is this. If you happen to find yourself in the uh, questionable position of speaking with them, Always know that no matter how reasonable their suggestions sound, it's very important not to agree. Okay? Because through a workaround of the logical mind, they assume that if you agree with them on any reasonable suggestion, then you have bought into their realm. Now, if by chance you do buy in, say in a moment of, of sleepiness, then the, then the only thing you have to do is say, Spirit to team, I cancel and annul and tear up all contracts for the all through free will. I just do that whenever there's a little slip up in that domain. And that'll keep you free and clear of all those um, tricky um, word plays that they use to, to attempt to influence the human race. That's the first suggestion. So, the second thing has to do with the way that they manage to create images and sounds in our minds. In other words, their way of like logging on to our te a natural God-given telepathic processes. Now, I've discussed in the uh, the big post that I did recently with three videos on um, on demonry, I've discussed um, how they have a way of a technology for glomming together the small lines of the etheric net, and uh, this this thing that they do with with uh, interfering with telepathy and like logging onto telepathy is like that. They create in the etheric net a short circuit. Um, as is often the case, uh, 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 they change the, the arc of energy there um, so that inside of the mind, inside of the brain right in here, there's one spot and on the other side over here, up a little, I think, there's another spot and they manage to arc the energy forward towards the, the, the front of the forehead where many people mistakenly think the third eye point it is. So from this side of the left side of the head, I know you can't tell too well on the video, arcing around in front, like in front of the head, and back to that other side. And that is how they create the illusion that they're speaking with us, okay? The solution for that is to feel the third eye point where it really is, which is directly back in the center of the head from, from either, you see, one of the pineal, and the, I believe the pineal is right here between the eye, eyebrows, but located in the center of the head, just beneath the pituitary, which is a little bit higher, located, well, is accessed a little bit higher up here, what pe some people think of as a third eye point. There's a V-shaped energy that goes from this point and this point to the center of the head, meets at the, at the place where the pituitary and the pineal gland are. Okay, so enough biology. But the point here is, imagine, make in your imagination when you use your telepathy, make the point of your awareness the very center of your mind. Don't push it forward into the tele telepathic with realm that carries into, like projecting into mind control. Uh, that's a mental filter and an illusion that we can project energy out of our minds like this and into the third eye point of another person and penetrate into their minds. These are all complete illusions, okay? The power of the third eye point and the mastery of self, the mastery of the mind, has to do with this point deep inside of the brain. Deep inside of the brain. So feel the very center of your mind the very center, place your awareness there, and that way you will be beyond Satan's grasp, beyond the grasp of the demon world. They cannot play with you with regard to false sensory, sensory identification. They cannot create that object-based reality that is so untrue and so opposite the law of love. 
That was point number, number two. And now, I have a story for you that I've told in part before. And this has to do with a friend of mine in the realm of the nature spirits. It's a sylph that I know, a sylph, S-Y-L-P-H. And long ago, it manifested as a fiery white cross on my back. These sylphs, they say, are paired with human beings who've been baptized in Jesus Christ. I have no doubt but what there are other sylphs that specialize in other religious paths and other spiritual paths. But when I was born and shortly thereafter, my parents took me for baptism in the Catholic Church. And at that moment, as I've read later, my sylph and I became one. It became my partner in spirituality throughout my life. So, I had forgotten about that. And then one day, I don't know why, suddenly, I was in a meditation class and suddenly, my self manifested as a, as a brilliant white fiery cross um, on my back, next, in the place where the, the back funnel of the heart chakra is. Yes, and when it manifested, a river, an ocean of cosmic love poured forth from the front of my, from the front of my uh, heart, poured forth into the world every time that I was around other people. And when I would bless the waters and, and walk in the woods, it would happen. <sighs> now, just to let you know, why do sylphs pair with humans? They do that so that both so that humans can reach a level of spiritual called spiritual adept. So by 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 sensing the heart and feeling the heart and opening it completely, they can reach that rarely attained level called spiritual adept. And it's a, a beneficial partnership for both because the sylph itself while perfecting and helping the human to perfect his or her energy of the heart, also perfect their own spiritual path. And such a self becomes transformed to a seraph, one of the highest orders of angels. It joins the seraphim. And so, there's that story. So, I got to thinking today about this question that Thoth brings up in the Emerald Tablets about the cross and the circle, the angles and the circle. And I got to thinking that another meaning, it's a very deep metaphor, the question of the cross and the circle. Another meaning of that symbolism is that the, the self the fiery cross, the self, perfects the circle of the heart. Isn't that cool? Very cool. In the same way that in another context, in the context of, of the geography of the mind in the world, the angles in the cross represent logical thought, left brain thought, and the circles represent right brain thought and vortical motion, the movement of the blood, the movement of the blood through the body and the escape of the heart of the human from this trap of the world of, of time and space, from this world of duality. So the self, the training of the left brain, and our understanding of its limitations, and the love of the nat natural world for our own hearts, those things all come together to transform us to the highest that we really are. <laughs>